Through 75 counties and hundreds of investigations, from the most violent crimes to petty infractions, this is Arkansas Crime Watch with Kevin Kelly. Little Rock Police investigating a homicide that unfolded Thursday afternoon in southwest Arkansas. The victim shot near a playground where families were outside enjoying the weather. Good evening and thanks for watching Arkansas Crime Watch on Fox16.com. I'm Kevin Kelly. The shooting took place along the 7700 block of Chico Road near an apartment complex. Our Hunter Hoagland talked to one witness who did all she could to help the victim survive. It's the scene of the city's 15th homicide this year, a scene all too familiar to those who work them. But the victim, much more than just a number. See, I, I'm crying and I don't even know him, but I just, if that was my brother, I want somebody to help him. Little Rock police say a man was shot here at the town and country apartments off Chico Road Thursday, now shaking all those who call the complex home. Nobody was helping him but us. His friends, everybody else just sleep, just looking around. Nobody was trying to help the boy. Kennedy Walker near the playground with her babies at the time of the shooting. She says she tried giving the victim CPR, but the injuries too severe. I was opening first, and then he he just started going out, and I was we were just talking to him, trying to make him like give a response. I heard four or five gunshots, so I heard it, and I was like. Whoa. Other neighbors now on high alert that the gun violence seen across Little Rock has made its way into their neighborhood. I don't know if it's gang violence. I don't know. I don't know if it's just angry people, but something's going on. With violent crime spiking in the capital city, these neighbors say something needs to change before more people get hurt. To see people our age steady dying, it, it, just, it just feels weird. Little Rock police have identified the victim as 24 year old Deshaun Stokes. The investigation far from over so far. No suspect information has been released. Little Rock police also investigating another homicide after a man's body was found Wednesday inside a car along the 6300 block of Colonel Glen Road. The car was found in the parking lot of a Dollar General store. Police say 18 year old Azrian Johnson was found shot and killed in his car. Police say they also spoke to another man who was injured in a shooting at an apartment complex near Colonel Glenn. That man reportedly telling officers he shot someone and then drove his vehicle to Dollar General. No charges have been filed and so far no suspects have been arrested. A crime alert out of Pulaski County after a woman is killed on Price Lane. The Pulaski County Sheriff's Office says neighbors called 911 around 1 a.m. Tuesday morning. Officials say fighting and an argument led to gunshots. When deputies arrived, they heard more shots being fired. When they rushed into the house, they found 47-year-old Amy Duvall dead. A man was taken into custody. No kids were inside at all, and, and luckily, of course, the school was not affected at all since it was earlier this morning. It appeared to be just her in that home uh, up until he arrived, possibly. But hopefully, after speaking with him, uh, we'll be able to get a better idea of what happened. As far as I know, yes, he is cooperating. Deputies eventually arrested this man, 48 year old Mark Coleman, in connection to the murder. He was booked into the Pulaski County Jail and charged with first degree murder. His bond set at $750,000. Two men are in jail after Little Rock police say they were involved in two different shootings. Yaman Tony is one of several suspects accused of shooting a 17 year old girl at the Otter Creek Racquet Club last month. He's charged with aggravated assault, battery in the first degree, and is being held on a $300,000 bond. Stanley Bush was also arrested in connection to a shooting outside Park Plaza Mall in December. Police say both suspects were taken into custody by SWAT teams earlier this week after they barricaded themselves inside a home on South Monroe Street. Thefts of catalytic converters spike across the nation, including here in the natural state. Take a look at your screen. Here's the proof. Conway police recently recovered several converters stolen over the past 10 days. Thieves are targeting those car parts for good reason. They contain precious metals, platinum, palladium and rhodium. And the price per ounce of those three precious metals has spiked. Take a good look. Here's the proof. Platinum is worth more than $1,200 per ounce. Palladium, 
nearly $2,700 per ounce, and rhodium is worth nearly $26,000 per ounce. Our Haley Brooks talked to a victim of this crime who tells her the damage the thieves caused is going to cost him nearly $10,000. We are a church that is known for giving, but in a case like this, it wasn't giving, it was taking. Central Baptist Church in Conway, Arkansas was recently the target of a theft. It's a pretty low thing to do to rob from a church. Senior pastor Don Chandler says their church bus is usually parked in this lot, but it's currently in the shop after the catalytic converter was stolen. Chandler says a lot of damage was caused in the process. It's about $9,400 to fix. Catalytic converters are often targeted because they contain precious metals that are valuable. Scrapyards pay between $20 and $500. I called a dozen scrapyards in central Arkansas. None of them wanted to speak on camera. However, one yard told me they stopped buying catalytic converters for this very reason. Another said when they do buy scrap, they write down all of the seller's information. Conway PD sent me almost a dozen reports of converter thefts from this year. Many reports say two or more converters were stolen. But this department isn't the only one. Faulkner County and Lone Oak County both say they made several arrests this year. In one case, Lone Oak County deputies recovered 56 catalytic converters. In front of a good man, you could leave something unlocked and open completely and it would never go missing. In front of a bad man, locks and fences and bus barns probably won't do any good. So I think it's all about what's inside a person that makes that happen. In Conway, I'm Haley Brooks. Of course, there are a number of things law enforcement says you can do to protect your car. Park your car in a garage or secure parking area that is well lit. You can also install an anti-theft device on your exhaust, which can range in price from about $130 to more than $400. Something to think about. We begin tonight's Crime Tracker report in Perry County, where police arrested a man in connection to a triple shooting last month. George White was arrested Monday morning near Highway 113. He's being held at the Perry County Detention Center and faces three counts of battery in the first degree. He's accused of shooting three people on March 12th. We're told one of the victims was paralyzed from the waist down after being shot. A Lono County man is facing dozens of charges related to child pornography. 55-year-old Nathan Williams was arrested April 1st in North Little Rock by multiple agencies. The Attorney General's office says a search of his phone found images of child sexual exploitation. He was arrested on 30 counts of distributing, possessing, or viewing matter depicting sexually explicit conduct involving a child. He's being held on a $100,000 bond in the Lono County Jail. Moving now to Helena, West Helena, where the city treasurer is facing charges of driving while intoxicated. 53-year-old Derek Turner was stopped by an officer on April 5th after police say Turner's car was swerving between lanes. Officials say Turner was unable to perform a sobriety test after he was pulled over and that there was evidence in his car that he may have been drinking. Turner was arrested but has been released on bond. I, I know, I've got, them, I've got them coming. We're coming as quick as we can. A terrifying moment for a woman in Saline County who was just trying to do her job. Tonight, two men are facing charges of aggravated assault and battery after police say they chased down the woman and rammed her car in Saline County. Our Katrin Asaf has more, including the frantic 911 call. Oh, my God. Okay, 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 okay. A desperate call to police. As Destiny Martin is hit over and over again by drivers set on ramming her off the road. I've got help coming, just stay on the phone with me, okay? But that isn't how the night of March 13th started. Martin began her route like normal, dropping off papers around midnight. But one stop on the property of Justin Osbrooks changed everything. He was bagging into his driveway and then he seen me and he just turned out of the driveway and just started following me. Martin says Osbrooks began trailing her through the rest of her paper route. Police say Osbrooks called his buddy Chris Hall, the two joining forces to block Martin's way. So the Jeep started hitting me and then the Dodge was trying to break me and slow me down. 
After about 20 minutes, a terrified Martin called 911. I'm going to right now. These people are trying to round me around me off the road. Moments before the chase turned violent. I know, I've got him, I've got him coming. I pretty much believed that he was trying to kill me. I didn't have no doubt in my mind that that was going to happen. Martin stayed on the phone with first responders as her car spun out and ended up here. But even after that, Osbrooks and Hall didn't stop. I looked back in the rear mirror and then he spent his car around and came charging back up. Martin is okay. The two suspects have been arrested and charged with aggravated assault and battery. But the horrifying ordeal has lasting consequences for Martin. The only thing I see is headlights every time I close my eyes. And a new habit of watching for cars getting too close for comfort. Osbrooks and Hall have their first court appearance at the end of this month. The U.S. Marshals teaming up with Crime Watch to track down some of their most wanted suspects. Tonight, the spotlight is on this man, Jeremy Reed. U.S. Marshals say he's wanted for federal supervised release violations and first degree murder in Blyville. If you know where he is or if you have seen him, call the U.S. Marshals. The number to call is right there on your screen. We want to remind you all of the suspects you've seen tonight are innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. Remember, if you have any information on any of these cases we talked about tonight, you're asked to call your local police department. Thanks for watching Arkansas Crime Watch. I'm Kevin Kelly. Be smart, be safe, and if you see something, say something. I'll see you tomorrow night on Fox 16 News at 530 and 9.